Hi everybody, welcome to JNS Farms, and uh, this will be video number four and the last video of me interviewing Grandpa, and uh, well, not interviewing, but talking with Grandpa, and uh, same as the last three. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below, and I will try to make sure that uh, we answer those questions for you whenever I do a formal interview for him. And uh, for those of you wondering, yes, I am still going to do the interviews with my siblings. Um, I just haven't got us all kind of corralled together. And the last time I did, I forgot my camera. So those are coming up as well um, about uh, the growing up a farm kids. So um, those are coming. I do promise they are coming. So um, anyway, I hope you have enjoyed these videos. And uh, if you like them... Um, Please let me know and I might try to do some more of them. Um, I always think that there's a great deal that you can learn from your elders. Um, uh, nowadays, you know, uh, unfortunately most of them are kind of tossed to the wayside and, and forgotten about. So um, I do think it's very important that we listen and uh, learn from our elders. So anyway, I... Uh, Hope you guys like this, and uh, if you have questions for Grandpa, please leave them in the comments, and I will talk to you later. Hope you enjoy. You guys find a, what was it, a muskrat or a mink or something like that? One time? Yeah, I found them up under a rock. Yeah? We worked all in, guys, did never did get him. Never did get him? No. I think the kids will get him. Probably it. Up to my house. Okay. What are you going to do, Court? Take the kids up to the house, up to my house. Okay. All right, I'll be up in a little bit, Pussy. So you found your mink under a rock, huh? Yeah, we damn lucky we didn't get him. He would have tore you up. He tore him, though. We worked all evening trying to get that thing. Well, what did you want him for? Yeah, I don't know. We're going to make pet out of him again. Yeah, right. I don't know how we found a hole him after we caught him, but we, <laughs> we wasn't worried about that. We tried to get him. You and your brother. Y'all were always into something like that, weren't you? Always into something. Kind of like when you saw them ducks. <laughs> yeah. On the way to Roachport. Yeah, and them ducks had fun. Boy, we wanted them ducks that day. You wanted to catch them? We couldn't catch them damn things. They duck on that water. Couldn't we, catch them, huh? We the money slime the same you ever seen. Then we had to go on Roachport and get some groceries. I bet your mother loved it when you got home, didn't she? Well, she didn't be able to do that. She used to it. She figured if you weren't muddy, then you hadn't done nothing all day, huh? We hadn't done nothing. We hadn't done nothing. We didn't come in muddy or something. Crying or swollen? No, oh, we didn't come in doing that. I bet you hollered a little bit when you got that thorn in your foot. Yeah, I did that day. But I imagine that was pretty uh, painful. Them things burn like far. Hell of a blood, Dad told us not to go down there. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of added insult to injury, didn't it? Yeah. Didn't that tell me the second time not to go down there, though? I bet he didn't. You had to learn the hard way, though, didn't you? Yeah, I did. You guys used to fish in the Missouri River too, didn't you? Yeah, we sneaked down there. Told mother we fished in the pond. Dad knew when a big yellow carp was coming from, but he didn't tell her. <laughs> you think she would have shut you down if she would have known? Well, she did shut you down when she found out. <laughs> you weren't very old though, were you? No, we weren't only eight or nine years old. We were fishing in the river. Yeah. Oh, we catch some good fish, too. I bet they tasted good, didn't they? Yeah. Your mom could pretty much cook anything. Oh, yeah, make it taste good. Kind of like my wife. She'd cook anything make it taste good. Anything? Anything. I don't give a damn up. But after she cooked it, I had to eat it. Well, yeah. Yeah, that was the deal. But it normally, 99% of the time, tasted pretty darn good. Tasted awful good. She could buy anything else to make it taste good. Of course, she started cooking when she was six, seven years old. Yeah. That made it different too. 
she had had a few years of experience under her belt, mm -hmm. taking care of. She had ten brothers and sisters, didn't she? Yeah, and these women today, they ain't know nothing about cooking. Most of them would scorch water. <laughs> Can burn water, huh? Hell yes. They do all their cooking out of a can or their... What was, what was your favorite thing your mom made you to eat? Oh, I wouldn't think I ate a particular thing. I ate everything she... You pretty much ate everything. You did? We ate everything when we ate it. Yep. I bet you ate a lot of beans. A lot of beans, a lot of potatoes. Yeah, a lot of salty pork. Yeah, that's how you, that's how you uh, preserved your pork, wasn't it? Right. You salt, they didn't have that cure they got the beans. Yeah, what they, they brine it or what did they do with it? No, they put down a layer of salt, then a layer of meat, and a layer of salt. And they left it. So many days we didn't take it out and hang it. We yeah. Took it off, wouldn't hang it. Yeah. That's the way they cured back meat back there in the early 1900s. Y'all had hog killings and stuff. Killed hogs all winter. Yeah. They'd go from farm to farm. They'd start start the latter part of November and kill till April. The community event. Right. Everybody help each other then. Yeah. They, uh, they all work together. And uh, most everybody in your community was known for something, wasn't they? Oh yeah. Like your dad had what, peach trees, right? Yeah, he had peach trees. All of them do all peach trees. And uh, your mom was... Cherry trees. She had, what, tomatoes and... Oh, we raised all kind of goodies in the garden. Everything. Should y'all ever raise sugar cane? Oh yes, we made love of them. Hey, my job was to run it through that grinder and get juice out of it. Oh yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we had a horse. There was What was his name? Old Dan. And he would turn he walk in a circle all day long, pulling that grinder that was getting the juice out of that cane. See, the only horse we had that would do that. Wouldn't stop, huh? No, he he do it well, of course, he'd take all these moves. Yeah. But he would walk all day. And about the second day, them damn money bees would eat you up around there looking at that juice off the cane. <laughs> the honey bees? Yeah. <laughs> so you better get it done quick, huh? And honey bees would eat you up. Did you ever find a honeybee hive and try to get some honey? Oh, yeah. Well, no, I didn't try to get no honey out of it. <laughs> you were smarter than that? I was smarter than that. I wasn't fooling no one. Honeybee had, had a fellow married my grandmother and he thought he was good at it, but he wasn't worth a damn. Oh, yeah? Them bees took him out of there. They didn't uh. even let him stay in the holler. Huh. Coons have been in them bees. Uh oh. They've already been pissed off some, huh? Done stirred them up. Yeah. Did you ever make sugar, uh, maple sugar? No, maple syrup. Maple syrup? No, we turned into sugar. Huh. That's a cup of cake, doesn't it? Well, throw them in the bucket. Yeah, we. Uh, you made maple sugar. Yeah, we got the uh, had them had those big large kettles. I expect it held a hundred gallons. Yeah. Of the sap. We filled it up with that sap, and we was gonna make maple sugar. We got to see if we didn't have five pounds of sugar. Out of hundred gallons of syrup or uh, sap, huh? Yeah. We didn't buy that anymore. I bet too you much, worked awful hard for that. <laughs> too much work involved there, man, getting all that sap out of them trees. Well, what else did you have to do? Huh? Well, we didn't have nothing else to do. We weren't going to give you that no more. <laughs> we never did. Uh, that was one project we give up on. 
wasn't worth the the work wasn't worth the reward, huh? No, it wasn't near worth the reward. <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah. We like to work, but not, we like to return too. Yeah. We didn't get much out of that deal. Dad told us we wouldn't. But we had to try it. But well, you all were too stubborn to listen. We had to try it, but we didn't try it no more. You learned, huh? You learned pretty quick. Is there anything you didn't like eating as a kid? Huh. It wasn't nothing like that then. You eat what was on the table, and if you eat that, you got to look. So Your wasn't mama wasn't cooking nothing else, huh? Well, there wasn't nothing else cooked. It was there, and if you didn't like it, that was your problem. You would have been hungry, but that wasn't the way it happened. You eat it and up. Didn't complain about what was your on your plate. Didn't say, I, didn't, I don't like it. You never heard a kid say that then. I don't like that. No! Well, they know that there was going to be nothing no different. Nowadays, I don't like that. Well, their mother run and get them something else fixed, see. But it didn't happen back there then. They, uh, they were happy to have it on their plate anyway. you damn right. They eat what was there and shut up. Wasn't no television to watch all night either. Yeah. When did you get your first television? They got it while I was in Korea. 1953. 1953. Well, they got all kinds of stuff when you were gone, when didn't they? Yeah. When did they get their first car? Let's see. That was in 41, I think. 41 or 2. Before that, you had horses, huh? Well, we had to go then, but then it was horse and wagon. To get to Columbia, that was too far. Columbia was too far, and that was not very far down the road. Uh, we couldn't make it that far. I didn't get to Columbia until I was 12 or 13 years old. Wow. No. That was I bet that was a big city for you. That's a big time city. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't very big to you now. Your dad got a hold of a mail horse one time, didn't he? A horse that was broke to the mail? Yeah. He was fun to ride. <laughs> I got on that bird and come to the first mailbox. When he threw the brakes on, I went over to you. Yeah, the horse could stop all the time. Yeah, he was broke to stop at every mailbox, huh? Well, he did. Well, you you got back up on him. Huh? You got back up on him after I that. I did. My brother didn't, though. <laughs> he led him back to the house. The first time around? The first time around. Oh, we got to we'd ride him all the time, but we slowed him down when we got the mailbox. Because you knew he was going to stop That's anyway. That's what the problem was, that mailbox. We throwed every kid in the neighborhood on him until they found out what was going on and they wouldn't ride him. Then it wasn't no fun no more, was it? Hell no, he wouldn't ride him. He wouldn't ride him no more. <laughs> Had to try him out on every kid, huh? Yeah, so the word got around and then we couldn't, didn't have no luck on it no more. <laughs> oh, Lord. We had to uh, give up on that. Nobody would ride the horse. Can you blame them? No, I couldn't blame them. They ain't one of them hurt some of them. Ah, you were young and and uh, limber then. I'm sure. We get the cage up in the barn and ride deal. Oh like, yeah. Like you do at these rodeos. That was fun, huh? Yeah. Yeah. We've done everything for a little pleasure back there in here. Well, fun. You were you weren't a bit ornery, were you? No, no. no. We cut these grapevines off and we go across the holler. Get up on the side and then we ride back. 
Well, we went down the next floor, and you the one we cut before you fall before, but you don't do that. Why not? But by the time you got the middle of the holidays, the damn thing broke. <laughs> you gotta have new ones every year, huh? Yeah, I don't use the same grapevine two years in a row. Well, who was the one that got to try it out the first time? That's all? Yeah. I think I got none of these. You got none of huh? That's probably why you remember you don't do that. You don't do that. You don't get a new tree. New vine. The old fall. wild grapevines? Huh? Them old wild grapevines? Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to do that two years in a row. Not you say one day fall. Them things drop you about ten feet. Boy, that hurts. I imagine. I'm surprised you never did break a bone. I was lucky there, never did. I'm very surprised. Never did. Break one. We've done everything in my wood, but we never did break one. You ever, since you guys are right next to the uh, railroad, you had uh, people coming up begging for food. Oh, the bums went there. Mom, yeah. give them, give them a little something. Oh yeah. Oh, one where me and Fred the bum. He's been there about 15 years, but he leave every summer for about two months, and they didn't know where he went. Yeah. But he'd come back every fall, live down the gate water. Set up shop down there, huh? Yep. He could run up in that cave and stayed the same temperature year round. The damn fool slept down the holler and all was covered up with his face. The rest of it was out in the cold. Yeah. <laughs> he was the neighborhood bum, huh? Yeah. What, he just go to peop different people's houses once a week or something? and. Well, he'd come up there and help Dad cut so much wood, and he would give him some to eat. He'd leave, he'd, he'd have enough to eat and feed him three or four days, and he'd be back and cut a little more wood. I bet that was a job, cutting wood, for yeah. all the winter long back then. Brother and I cut it with a cross cut saw, and Dad put it. Yeah. We cut it on a big sugar tree. And uh, our job was to cross cut the stall still hanging out there in that shed right there. Yeah. It was a little harder getting your firewood back then, wasn't it? A whole lot harder. And you had to have enough for the winter time too, because that's all you had to heat your house with, wasn't that's it? That's all we heated with. If you didn't have no firewood, you didn't have no heat. And the stove wasn't worth a damn or nothing. Yeah. Those little old pot that the stove, they wasn't no count. Well, what did the did the cook stove heat the house any? Oh well, it would, yeah, but they put it they'd go out at night. Yeah. And it depend on the other thing. At night, it wasn't no count. You have to get up several times to poke some wood in it. Yeah. In other words, you had a good blanket on at night. Damn good blanket, you better have. Because <laughs> there really wasn't a lot of insulation in them walls, was there? None. The wind could damn near blow from the north to the south. <laughs> Back there then, they'd set them on rocks. Yeah. Well, my folks' house still sitting on them eight rocks. Been there over a hundred years. Yep, the old home place. Right. Today, they pour this damn concrete and it cracked all the hell and falls all pieces in eight or ten years. Back then, they knew how to build a house to last a little while, didn't they? Well, yeah, they sat on them rocks. They probably got them, what, down by the river? Yeah. Oh. Got another. I was down there. 
Oh, out of the bluffs? They know which one to hew out and make them. So your dad was a uh, stonemason? Yes, he was. Yep. How did he learn that trade? Huh? How did he learn that trade? Off a man named Steve Blue. Back in the 20s. Taught him everything? Yeah, he thought that he was a real stonemason too. Yeah, he was one of the best ones around, wasn't he? Well, he was the only one left in town after he, after he passed. Well, I had a son that could do it. And I got a nephew. I need mean, a uh, jar to it. Oh, yeah, I'll get you a nephew is pretty good at it. Yeah. Uncle Fred could do a really beautiful job whenever he, whenever he was doing it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was good stone making. You were a carpenter all your life. Oh yeah, I never improved that damn brick. Imagine you had enough of it when you were younger. I carried them for a while, that was enough for me. You said no. <laughs> yeah, I never improved that. Fred Coates taught you your carpenter stuff, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I worked You learned from him? I worked with him 18 years. And then you went into business for yourself? Yeah. I've done that for 35 years. And you run your farm here? Yeah. And you you had all kinds of stuff. I had all kinds of hunting around here. Sheep. A lot of sheep and... Ducks and sheep and cows and hogs. You had everything. Goats. Had a little bit of everything around here. A lot of everything. But you usually did pretty good with them. Yeah, I made pretty good money for a week. 